Hey guys, Marco here from the Vatican's and today we have a really cool exclusive thing. We're going to talk to Fred Poole, the general manager from PB regarding the awesome HP2. I did this uh, as a group exclusive for my awesome uh, all things related Wolfgang Facebook group, which is really great because our members got to ask all the questions. So I'm going to take the best ones and uh, you know, see what Fred has to say. His schedule is incredibly busy. Obviously production is ramping up on the HP2 and a lot of us are so happy to have this guitar back, I guess, in its new formation, re-endition, whatever you want to call it, the rebirth of a great guitar. Is it better? Um, as you know, I did a review on it. I really loved it. I think it's a phenomenal start. And this is actually the second generation. Uh, obviously they came first 2017, 18, if I'm not mistaken, but this is a great chance. I've been talking to Fran, he's such a killer, cool dude and really committed to this and you can just tell his passion about the company and this particular guitar and the history. So we spent a lot of time on the phone and I got him roped into this and it's really, really cool. What we're going to do is I'm going to, you know, send him the, the best questions that I thought is going to cover the most ground and at his own time and leisure to home, he can record the answers. I'll edit it together and it'll be super, super fun. But without further ado, I'll go right into it. Fred, are you ready? We're ready to rock. Here we go. All right, Fred, the first question I have for you that people inboxed me right away and everybody wants to know, what the hell took you so long? <laughs> what the hell took so long to get this guitar back? And what was the decision and why? Now, there's a big misconception uh, that it has to do with Eddie's passing. We know that's not true because you guys already did it in 2017 and 18 years ago. Why did that production stop? What made you guys decide in 2017 after all these years, 94, 95, to bring it back and then stop production and now do it again? What, what took so long? Why did production stop and, and, and why did it restart now? Well, Marco, that's a great question and I get that asked a lot. Um, there's a long story behind it and I'm gonna to try to keep it as simple as possible, but when we parted company um, with Eddie in 2004, I was, believe it was, uh, yeah, 2004, we had a, an agreement, a kind of a gentleman's agreement that uh, he doesn't build the amplifier, we don't build a guitar. So we kind of all know what happened with the guitar, but Hartley being the guy he is, he still didn't want to build the guitar. And this was years went by, and I've always been kind of a, uh, you know, bugging him about it, saying, hey, we've got all this work in progress, you know, whip uh, over at Plant 2, this is the facility we used to build these guitars in, it was just sitting there. We've got neck blanks and wood, gorgeous wood. And I said, we've got to make this guitar again. We've just got to do it because, you know, they're, they're making the amplifier. We need to make this guitar. So in about 2016, finally came around and let's do this. Let's, let's make this guitar and see what happens. It's just, a, it's just a waste to have all that stuff over there. So we started building guitar again, um, but we didn't have the full staff that we used to because we shut down USA production of guitars in 2008 and basses the whole whole nine yards because of the recession when that hit uh, really took a toll on us so but we still had some of the staff because we like to keep those people around you know no matter what a lot of legacy knowledge so we used the very few people that we had to start making those guitars again well we could not anticipate the demand we had it was huge so what ended up happening is we couldn't build the guitars fast enough we had a lot of upset customers and because we were trying to rush them we weren't getting the quality we wanted out of the factory over there and it was just not right so we decided the right thing to do, instead of creating more bad will with our customers by not being able to produce them, we would look for a factory that could not only make a quality guitar, use the materials we had, uh, and make enough of them to satisfy consumer demand. And that's what we've done. I mean, we found this fantastic factory in Europe. Uh, great guys. Some of the best luthiers in the world are there. And I think that uh, once people get their hands on these guitars, they are going to be as excited as we are that we're making not only a world-class instrument, the best instrument we've ever made, and out of some of the materials that we've had for a very, very long time. Um, so we're, we're very proud of this, and, and uh, we're looking forward to ramping it up. I had quite a few uh, people reach out to me after the review, and even as uh, short as uh, yesterday, telling me, Marco, I saw your review. I actually want to get my hands on, the, on a HP2, but I can't seem to track one down. Um, is it a production issue? Are there more coming? Or is it just we're waiting post New Year? Is there a limited amount? Or is it going to regular production? 
when will the stores be packed with them and which stores can we expect to carry them is it going to be a guitar center or is it more like the smaller shops where is the production heading the hp2 is going to be available at every pv dealer um, in the united states and around the world so our distributors are getting on board with these it is uh, super exciting i mean we haven't seen such excitement for these guitars in a long long time so you should be able to call any pv dealer in the world and say hey i want to check out one of these guitars and hopefully they'll have one on hand super high demand right now so they are going to be scarce for a while and if you do want to get one uh especially if you want to get one of the nos guitars probably should order it now because they were gonna they're gonna be gone as soon as we run out of the uh, original materials so get them while they're hot hopefully you can get to check one out if not marco did a great review on here you can check out his review and uh, take his word for it we're uh, super happy with these guitars and take my word for it uh, you'll appreciate it and if you ever had any problems all you got to do just pick up the phone and give us a call and we'll take care of you. Great stuff. Next question. Um, stainless steel fret and custom shop options. Also single coil has been brought up. So where is this heading with respect to more options? We have four colors now. I think the blue, the black, the tiger and that beautiful ocean burst. Where do we go from here with respect to options? I'm getting bombarded with questions like, hey man, I want uh, stainless steel, is it going to be a custom shop? When are more colors coming? Is there going to be a cheaper, more affordable version? Is there going to be a more expensive version that's customizable? What, when, where, how? So we started off with four basic colors, the colors that sold really well for us when, um, when we first started doing these again in 2017, just to uh, make sure that we could deliver. We didn't want to complicate it with a bunch of different colors and finishes and skews and but things are going well, so what we've been doing lately is on our social media, Instagram and Facebook, we've been asking our consumers what kind of finishes they want to see. So we do plan on doing some limited edition runs of some of the original colors uh, that we had done years and years and years ago with these guitars, maybe 50, 100 pieces, something like that. And we are probably going to add trans black or a couple other colors that people had picked out online in the future. I mean, <laughs> believe it or not, one of the most popular requests was pink. And I'm not sure if we're getting spoofed here or <laughs> if people actually want a pink guitar. But uh, we tend to try to listen to our customers and, and uh, that's what we're going to do. And custom shop pieces, a few. You and I had talked about that. And um, I've got a couple coming, mostly for my, uh, you know, just kind of playing around to see what they end up looking like. But yeah, this is just the beginning for us. Uh, we were really super excited about it and um, we've got a lot of things coming and not just with the HP2 we've got instruments uh, in the queue that I think everybody's going to be excited to see next question how do you tell people that are that have a concern with it not being USA made or have quality concerns uh, how do you explain to them to how do you make them overcome that or look beyond that? Now, I was lucky. I bought one. I fell in love with it. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. But what do you say to people that are kind of stuck on this Made in USA stuff? What would you tell them when it comes specifically to the HP2? Uh, short of just, oh, of course, play one, which is what I told them in the review. Um, but what would you tell them as somebody who's maybe new to the guitar and not familiar with the original PV uh, uh, Wolfgang? Well, the most important thing when building a guitar with a PV name on it is that it's world class. I mean, that's, that is important to us, um, especially for this guitar. So we anticipated people uh, maybe being critical of it not being made in the USA and maybe looking at it a little harder than they might if it had a USA stamp on it. So we wanted to make sure not only was it as good as what we had made in the USA, but better. So. I can honestly say some of the best artisans in the world are in Europe. Uh, some of the best violin makers in history are from that part of the world. And these guys are making world-class instruments. And as you saw when you got your guitar, this is, uh, it is really the best HP2 we've ever made. And uh, all you have to do is give it a try. I think you'll be extremely happy. I've been getting a lot of questions about pickups, Fred. Um, how is this one different than what was in the original in the, in the late 90s? What exactly did you do and decide and how did that decision come about? Even the cat is getting excited. Look, I'm, eh, there's always a cat in my, my videos, right? When you, when you brought this guitar back to life, 
what was the philosophy and what were you after when it comes to the engine of the car, the pickups? What exactly had to be different or was it more like we want to capture the initial magic? Because you know you did the, the split coil, which, is, which actually is a really nice one, but what was the philosophy of the pickups and the tone you were after? Well, most importantly, um, Marco, when it comes to the, the guitar itself, is we wanted to make sure it was as close to its original self as possible because it was, it's always been a world-class instrument. But there were a few things a lot of customers wanted. One of them was uh, coil taps on both the pickups. It makes it a lot more versatile guitar because most of our customers play a lot of different types of music and not just one. And by putting taps on, it's, it's really, really easy for us to do that. Um, and it just made good sense. So both of um, the front humbucker and the bridge humbucker, neck and bridge, are both coil tapping, and I think that makes a lot of sense. As far as the tone goes, it's very much the same pickup we were using when we came out with the HP2, and it sounds very, very similar to some of the original guitars that we made um, back in the 90s or in the 2000s. So I think people will be extremely happy with the, the tone of the guitar, uh, the pickups are mounted directly to the body like they've always been, and it is uh, as much of the original guitar as we could make it with a couple of just added features to, I think, make a better better instrument overall. So, yeah, try it and hear it. I, I, I've heard people say it's a little brighter, um, but that always depends on which instrument you got, because you could take the exact same humbuckers, a set of humbuckers built from the same line of humbuckers that they put together, put them in two different guitars, they're going to sound completely different. So there's a little bit of, um, as Harley doesn't like to use the word magic, but uh, you're going to get a little bit different tone from guitar to guitar, from top to top, from pickup to pickup, but uh, you know everything I've heard so far and the people that have heard these guitars couldn't be happier. So we're excited. One of the things that excited me was the NOS. I'm, I, that really... I bought into and I'm happy I did because you know my black one just the neck it was probably one of the nicest bird's eye neck I've ever owned how many I'm getting asked a lot how many NOS will there be I heard anything from 50 to 400 to 200 will it be extended or is the NOS number just that's it it's done when it's done and then we're going to regular production uh, how many actual NOS numbers will, they, will there be and are those truly uh, leftover wood pieces from back in the day? So, Mark, we're talking about the NOS. Uh, we shipped pallets, and basically a container of wood, uh, over to Europe from, and we still have some here, actually, from uh, the production that we shut down in 2004. So, we had about... 600 neck blanks, well actually closer to 800 neck blanks that were pre-built and just sitting in, in baskets. We had, um, we still have a lot of tops, a lot of maple tops, flame maple tops, and baskets and baskets and baskets and all sorts of uh, uh, different types of body woods. So we picked up everything we had, put it in a container and sent it over. We think we'll be able to make six to 800 guitars with the NOS. Um, but that may not be possible. Since this wood's been around for a while, a lot of it probably uh, might not be able to be used. So we're just going to have to cross that bridge when we come to it. But when we are out of the materials that we had here, um, and it was just wood blanks, you know, it just neck blanks and, and wood. When we're out of those materials, uh, then we're going to stop putting the NOS mark on the back of the headstock and go into normal production. Now when we do, we're going to still make a world-class instrument. And right now we're we're trying to source, uh, you know, try to find sources for the wood that's as good as what we had here. And uh, we may actually have to still be buying the wood in the United States and then sending it over there. Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But for now, we anticipate six to 800 NOS guitars, maybe less. Uh, and when they're done, they're done. Um, that's uh, something we're going to stick to. We think it's cool that we're using this uh, old material. And, you know, it, it means a lot to us, too, to be... Um, straightforward with customers. I know a lot of customers are going to want it, but when we're finished with the NOS production, we're going to continue to make the guitar, probably some limited edition runs and start mixing it up and uh, making some unique colors and finishes and maybe trying some different woods and, and have fun with it. But uh, for now, uh, probably six to eight hundred. And yes, it is made from the wood that we had 
here in our factory uh, when we stopped production. So, hope that answers your question. Fred, thank you so much. Uh, this was really exciting, just uh, editing this together and learning myself and being a fan of the guitar. Uh, thank you for giving us the opportunity to kind of, you know, have a rebirth of it. I'm a total fan. I fell in love with it. I was hoping I would. And so I'm even more excited that it lived up to my expectation. Uh, for all of you who haven't seen it, go watch the review. Fred, thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks to all the members in this awesome Facebook group who came up with the questions. And all I can say is, uh, you know, get your hands on, on an HP uh, too. And it's rare for me to actually full on uh, endorse a product like that. You know, it takes a lot for me to, to be a fan of something to the point where I actually say, okay, this is, this is worth it. As you guys know from my reviews, I always like to point out <laughs> rather the things that, you know, are shaky and also value. So thanks a lot, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, it'll be on YouTube for everybody to see. Fred, thanks a lot. And I can't wait to meet you in person. And hopefully when this whole pandemic thing is over, we finally get to hang and uh, all of us, you know, stay safe out there. Take good care of each other and talk to you soon. Marco out. Cheers. Thanks for doing this, buddy. We really do appreciate it. And for everybody that uh, has purchased PV Guitar, we appreciate you too. It means a lot to the people that are down here. It means a lot to Hartley. Uh, yes, he's still here. Hartley's been running this company, still running it to this day. Uh, after, what is it, 55, going on 56 years now? Maybe more than that, 1965, yeah. So, uh, you know, we're just a small family operation here in Meridian, Mississippi and trying to make a difference and hope you see that we're working really hard to make you a great guitar. Mm -hmm.